Hi everyone, my name is Martin. I'm a final year PhD student at Nottingham Trent University, where with the help of my two supervisors, Costas and Nesta, I investigate the performance development of software as a service companies and other types of digital ventures. Um, and I've got a system dynamics model to show you about what performance variables we're interested in and how they develop, and then some simulation results. And the first variable I'm interested in as a performance outcome is value creation, which refers to the total amount of customer value created over a period of time. And usually in empirical studies, although there's some mismatch between these concepts, um, revenues is used to approximate it. You can see it here uh, in about the top right, where it's split up into how many customers the company has, as well as the use value, which reflects how much value is created per customer, which itself is decomposed into the product quality, as well as how intensively the average customer uses the product. Our second performance outcome then is the share of value captured, which is the fraction of value that is received and maintained by the vendor's profit, and usually empirical studies would use profit margins or return on asset to approximate it. We split it up into three different fractions. Firstly, we receive um, a share of value captured from customers, which depends on the product quality relative to competition, um, as well as on the switching cost the customers developed so far. We then lose a fraction of value or share of value to the resource erosion, which expresses essentially amortization and depreciation as a fraction of value creation. And then we lose a share of value to input providers, which depends on how effectively we use human resources and capital to create value and the cost of each unit of human resources and capital in the external environment. In addition to these environmental influences like the cost and competition, we also have resources in here like the human resources or customer base. So we then design three subsystems that capture or determine um, the quantity of resources held in each of them. And you see an overview of these subsystems integrated here now. The first one I want to talk about is the one in yellow, which is about technology development. And you've got there the human resources and capabilities developing additional technology. It creates more depreciation and amortization expenses, but it also improves the product quality along a technology S-curve. So it improves towards a maximum. The next part is the red one, which is about the customer base. And you have the human resources, depending on the capability, marketing and selling and acquiring new customers. But you also have a capacity constraint in that to service customers, depending on human resources and capabilities. And if we exceed that, uh, that capacity, our churn rate increases and we start losing customers. And, that, and then the final subsystem here is the gray one, which is about the firm's management. And it comes down that the management won't be fully occupied with managing the existing firm. Um, and in that case, they have some managerial slack, which they can use to make and implement growth plans, for example, by hiring. And hiring is critical because it increases the human resources. So we've got more inputs to all the other activities, which we can market more, service more, develop more. But it also affects capabilities negatively because new employees lack firm specific knowledge. So it's quite critical now that we understand what drives hiring. And for these hiring goals, we essentially look at what we call the dominant logic. And there are some SaaS entrepreneurs who want to scale up their user base, they form a growth goal, and then they figure out um, at current productivity levels determined or well, reflected by capabilities, how many employees do I need to acquire these customers and then service them. But not all SaaS vendors want to grow that ambitiously. There's also many who introduce effectively a maximum level of human resources that they will employ. For example, because owner managers don't want to delegate and stay in control. And then there's the sort of mixture of the two where companies normally have to transition from these growth focused, scaling up focused dominant logics to fixed human resource states. And we'll uh, look at all cases in the colloquium now, but for now we'll focus on the third one because it allows us to see all these cases essentially um, at the same time. And we've done three simulations. Um, we've got a base case in which employee numbers are fixed throughout time. Um, at the initial levels, we've got two cases in which the companies grow um, the customer base or want to grow their customers at 10 and 25% per year in the first five years. And then their employee numbers are fixed at whatever they were um, after five years. And what we can see is that companies who want to grow, they do actually grow the amount of value they create. However, they have lower levels of the share of value captured. They have sort of an initial dip, which is due to timing differences and having to pay off for inputs and value creation actually increasing after you hire employees. And they have lower levels of share of value capture because the average employee due to needing to train these new employees that they continue to hire first, um, the average productivity is essentially lower. And then as soon as they stop growing and keeping the employee numbers fixed, 
All cases essentially developed for value creation and are sharefully captured in a goal-seeking manner towards some natural performance level. And if you look at the financial resources on the very right, you can see that grow does not seem to pay off during the period of growth because the, these companies have less financial resources that could be paid out to investors, for example, during the period of growth. But once they stop growing, that previous growth is starting to pay off because they accumulate these resources now at a, lot, um, at a, at a much quicker rate, essentially. Um, and this is sort of the key message. Growth doesn't pay off while you do it. Growth pays off after the periods of growth. And there are natural performance levels um, for companies. Um, thank you a lot for listening, um, and I'm happy to take a few questions.